One of the major components of an emotional experience is going to be that physiological arousal. Uh, and so for this lecture, we're going to be focusing mainly on how emotion uh, is handled throughout the body. So we're not gonna be focusing on the cognitive experience um, or even the expressive behaviors. What we're, what we're gonna be focusing on is how the body um, triggers different types of physiological arousals uh, and whether or not the way the body responds is the same or is different different for different emotions. So the first thing we have to look at um, is how does the nervous system handle emotions? Uh, and so uh, if we think back to when we learned about the nervous system, we learned about all those different functional divisions of the nervous system. Uh, and the division that we're going to be looking at for emotional experience is going to be specifically uh, the autonomic nervous system. Remember, that's the autopilot feature of our body. Uh, and when we are in uh, some sort of emotional experience, the autonomic nervous system is what is going to create physiological arousal. Um, even more specifically, it's going to be the sympathetic nervous system. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to review um, what does the sympathetic nervous system do uh, when it's triggered, and then what does its counterpart do, uh, the parasympathetic nervous system, in order to bring us back to homeostasis. Okay, so here we have a chart um, that I'm going to ask you to think about and try to fill in on your own before I go through it. Um, what we see here presented are the two different divisions of the autonomic nervous system. Uh, so if you want to take a second, maybe pause the video and first try to fill in uh, which division is going to be filled in right here, um, which division is responsible for arousing the body and mobilizing energy in times of stress. And then over here, which division is in charge of calming us back down um, after a, stress, a stressful experience is experience has ended. Uh, and then I want you to go through all these different systems and think what happens with these systems when we're in a time of arousal and what happens when we're in a time of being calmed down. So pause the video, take a second, uh, and then I'll go through it with you. All right, so here we have um, the different divisions filled in. Uh, we see that the sympathetic is in charge of arousal, the parasympathetic is in charge of calming us back down. Uh, and the way that I always remember um, what happens with all of these bodily systems um, is first, I'll try to think about what happens to me when I'm in some sort of anxiety provoking situation. I know for a lot of you guys, maybe presenting in front of a classroom is stressful. So think about all of the things that happen when you're presenting in front of a classroom. Uh, and so you can quickly tick off a couple of these, uh, for example, um, you know that your heart rate starts to accelerate. Um, that's why you get like a little bit trembly when you're presenting. Um, you also get a little trembly because those stress hormones now are flooding your bloodstream so you can see the adrenal glands at work. Um, also, a lot of times you have to start drinking water uh, when you're presenting because you get sort of that like dry cotton mouth feeling uh, because your salivation is decreasing. Um, you start maybe to get a little bit sweaty. Uh, and so we can see uh, there that the skin is going to be perspiring. Um, so that's one easy way to try to figure out um, what does the sympathetic nervous system do to us um, when it's mobilizing energy. But then also be thinking about what are the systems which are necessary for immediate survival? And what are the systems which are a little bit um, more of like back burner systems? Uh, and so then if we look at something like digestion, uh, we've talked about the fact that in a time of stress, it's not really important that you're digesting your next meal because digestion and metabolism, that's a long-term goal. Uh, if you're in an immediately threatening situation, uh, which is how your sympathetic nervous system interprets almost any stressor, um, you need to worry about the things um, like getting blood flow to your extremities. So you can either fight or you can run away so that fight or flight um, the, the fight or flight reaction. Um, you need to be worrying about making sure, therefore, that your heart is beating. You need to get a lot of oxygenation going in your blood. Uh, and so look at the different systems and think, um, what is really necessary for my immediate survival? That's going to be sympathetic. Uh, and then what happens after all of that is over? Um, and so hopefully this was a little bit of a review for you uh, because this is uh, something that y'all should really have um, handled and very well um, understand at this point in the year. Okay, so the reason that we go through uh, what sympathetic nervous system arousal looks like uh, is so then we can lead into a discussion about the fact that honestly, our sympathetic nervous system uh, isn't able to um, come up with unique physiological signatures for all of our different emotions. Many emotions are actually biologically and physiologically um, 
similar, uh, almost identical. Uh, and so when we look at uh, what the body is doing, when it's feeling, for example, extreme fear uh, that we see here, or when it's feeling extreme anger, how we see here, or even if it's feeling sexual attraction or love, um, the body responds much the same way. Uh, and so even though if we think back to the James Lang theory of emotion, which suggests to us that every single emotion has a unique and distinct physiological signature, when we look at key markers, heart rate, perspiration, um, any of those systems involved in arousal, when we look at those markers, they really aren't that distinct for each emotion. Uh, and so generally and broadly, emotions are very, very similar physiologically, and they're very difficult to tell apart. Um, and so this is one of the problems uh, with utilize, utilizing a lie detection system. Uh, so what I'm going to have you guys do is I'm going to have you watch um, the video clip that I've linked uh, in the description. Uh, and you'll see there uh, how it's pointing out the problem with a lie detector. Uh, a lie detector can detect physiological arousal, yes. However, our physiological arousal is the same for fear and anger and love. Uh, so with a lie detection system, you can tell if someone's uncomfortable. Uh, you just can't tell why they're uncomfortable. Um, and so I'm going to have you guys watch that. Uh, and the next uh, lecture is going to be about, OK, even though physiologically um, most emotions are similar across uh, very general bodily systems, they also are um, distinct and different if we start looking at a neurological level.